Hi, welcome to Japan by Food. I'm your host, Shizuka Anderson. Today I am in the birthplace of matcha, Uji Kyoto. Uji is beloved across Japan for their amazing green tea and matcha. So today I'm going to be visiting some of the oldest tea shops in the world and also exploring what kind of modern twist to the classic cup of green tea we can find today. I am standing now at the Uji River, right next to the Uji Bridge, which is such a historic location, it's even mentioned in the tale of Genji, which is a historic Japanese story. There is a lot of history here, so it's a great place to come visit, and I feel really humbled to be able to see it in person, to be honest. I have just arrived at Ito Kyuemon, which is another green tea shop with a long history that originated here in Uji Kyoto in the year 1832 in the Tempo era. This is a shop with a long history of matcha, but today we'll see the new face of matcha in the modern era. Let's go see what they've got. This shop offers a wide variety of matcha desserts, but it also has matcha meal options, which I think is really unusual and unique. It's a little hard to decide, but I think what really stands out to me is their matcha curry udon. So let's give it a try with this beautiful little set that comes with a matcha parfait. This looks and smells amazing. So this is a matcha curry udon. This one is really special because the curry soup has been infused with matcha. And the udon noodles themselves are also matcha udon. So it's not normal white udon, they're green colored. The noodles look really good, but according to our resident ramen expert, Frank, you should always start with the soup. That is an unexpected flavor. It tastes like curry. So it tastes like a, almost a classic curry udon soup, but with a little added hint of matcha leafy bitterness. It's really interesting. Okay, now let's try the noodles. They look so good. Here we go. Mmm, they're really chewy. I love a good chewy udon noodle and the udon also tastes like matcha. The combination of the matcha noodles and the matcha soup really gives you this like pretty powerful kick of matcha. Ooh, <laughs> those are some long noodles. Now it's time for dessert. The Ito Kyuen shops are actually really, really famous for their green tea matcha parfaits. But today I'm gonna have the little one that came with my set. Let's see what their famous green tea parfaits taste like. Mmm, mmm. I believe this is a kanten jelly, which is also really traditional. Kanten bean agar. They use it in a lot of Japanese desserts as well. It's got a slight matcha flavor, and the sauce that it is in is also very matcha. Yeah, it's not a bitter dessert, it's sweet. It's perfect for people who love matcha and sweets for sure. It's very nice. This is a shop that serves matcha gyoza, as well as matcha takoyaki, and even matcha ramen. And apparently this is the only shop where you can get matcha gyoza. So let's see what it's like. We've got our matcha gyoza, and it comes with matcha salt. Normally gyoza is served with a dipping sauce, but this time they're serving it with only matcha salt, which is something that you would normally eat with tempura. Let's give it a try. My first ever matcha gyoza. Here we go. Even though the matcha itself is green, I think if you were to eat it by itself, it would still taste like a regular gyoza. It is the matcha salt that gives it a little bit more flavor. It gives it a little bit of a saltiness and um, a little hint of matcha leafiness, I guess you could call it. Next, let's try the matcha takoyaki. That's a lot of matcha. It's basically kind of like a pancake dough with bits of octopus inside. It's a really common and popular dish in Osaka, but Kyoto is very close to Osaka, so not surprising that they have it here. But the twist is it's got a matcha sauce on it. I am really curious about what this is gonna taste like. Let's give it a try. Mmm. Mmm. Mm hmm. 
I'm surprised it's as good as it is, actually. The outside is nice and chewy and doughy. The inside is really battery, I think is the best way to put it. It might even have a little bit of matcha infused on the inside. And the taco, or AKA octopus, is really chewy. And the sauce is really rich. It's got like the kind of classic takoyaki sauce, plus a little bit of matcha. It's not very overpoweringly matcha, it just has a lot of like umami flavor. It's really good. I am now at Matcha Republic, which is a modern matcha cafe that serves stylish matcha lattes like this one and all kinds of delicious matcha desserts. So let's go inside and give them a try. This is such a beautiful shop. And look at this, these are the drinks that they have here. Everything is so stylish. I've never seen matcha served like this before. But I'm really interested in this one here. It's called the Gang and Cheese Matcha Latte, which means rock salt cheese matcha latte. Rock salt and cheese and matcha? That's really unique too. I think I'm gonna give this one a try. Not only am I getting a latte, I think I also need a little dessert. So let's get this matcha panna cotta. It looks really good. There is a mirror on the table, so we have a cameraman reveal. <laughs> That's Esteban! <laughs> All right, here we go. We've got the goodies. Look at this adorable matcha latte with cheese and rock salt. You actually get to drink it in here, and they said first you should give it a shake. So why don't we shake it up? Oh, that looks so good. Okay, hold on, shake it a bit more. It's changed color as you can see. Now it looks like a creamy, milky matcha latte. Okay, let's give it a try. Here we go. Mm. This is super good. Whoa, this might be the best matcha latte I've had yet, ever. It's a really delicate matcha taste, very creamy with the cheese and a little rock salt to top it off and give it that perfect. <laughs> it's really good. I could drink 10 of these. Next, it's time for the matcha panna cotta. It also looks marvelous. Here we go. Oh, it's so soft. It's like cutting through a cloud. Mmm, it looks so fluffy. Let's see how it tastes. That is incredibly creamy and rich. The first cake of flavor you get is the matcha powder on top, which is full blast matcha. It's really matcha. It's like, it's, it's matcha matcha. <laughs> now let's try with the matcha syrup. Let's see how it changes the flavor. Oh, oh, that's super good. The matcha sauce uh, is quite sweet. It's kind of like a matcha syrup. And I think that offsets the bitterness of the matcha powder even more. So if you put that on top from the beginning, it'll be a nice, sweet, jiggly, pudding-like bite. That was so good. And also you get to take home your glass. They wash it for you and get a little bag for it. I have just arrived at Tsuen, which is actually the oldest tea shop in the entire world. And it's also coincidentally the 30th oldest company in the entire world too. So it has a whole lot of history and it's still here today in the exact same location. So let's go inside and taste a little bit of history. There's a beautiful view here too. Let's sit here. This is so exciting. This is the oldest tea house in the world. Since I'm at the OG tea house, I definitely need to get myself a cup of matcha tea. And why don't we get this beautiful sawara bisecto because it just looks amazing. This is the first time in に行くのにこの宇治橋を渡らないと行けなかったんですね。それであの橋森、橋を守るって書いて橋森として引き交う人にお茶を出したりとか、そういうことから始まって、後々にこうお茶の産地として有名になり、お茶屋さんという形になり
これはあの鶴瓶というんですけれどもお茶会に使うお水を宇治川から汲むために豊臣秀吉から頂い,いたものなんですけれどもこの鶴瓶をはあの千利休が作ったと言われています。Now I have my sweets and my matcha, and I'm so excited to try this because the history here is unbelievable. So it really is going to be like tasting history. And I think I have to start with my cup of matcha tea. Mmm, that smells so nice. It smells like you're standing inside of a tea field. It just smells wonderful. Let's give it a taste. Oh, that is smooth. I think the best way to describe it is grassy. It still has that hint of bitterness that just comes with matcha, but it is so smooth and little hints of sweetness from nature. There's no sugar added. It, there should never be sugar in matcha. This is the way to enjoy it. And honestly, I think you can smell and taste the quality of the tea leaves. Next, let's try the matcha dango. They're really cute and small. Look at how tiny this little stick is. Here we go. Itadakimasu. Mmm. That is really good. They're actually much softer than a lot of other dango that I've had before. It feels like they've mixed a little something in there to make it a little bit softer and less stretchy, but it's still got that wonderful chewiness, this lovely subtle hint of matcha flavor. And it's sweetened, so there's sugar mixed inside.、Mm, so you can enjoy it just as it is. It's really good. Finally, let's try the matcha zenzai. Zenzai is a traditional Japanese dessert, which is kind of usually like a red bean soup. This variation, the soup is actually made of matcha, and they have a ball of red bean paste in the middle. And shiratama white mochi balls, which are always in zenzai. So let's give it a taste. Mm. What's really interesting about this zenzai is they actually took a cup of matcha green tea, and that's the whole base of the soup. And it's the red bean paste that you mix into it in the scoop that gives it some sweetness. And I think the slight hint of bitterness from the green tea with the sweetness of the red bean paste is such a nice combo. And the shiratama mochi ball gives it a really fun chewiness. It's a great dessert. What a wonderful day it's been here in Uji, Kyoto. My impressions of the place are that green tea and matcha are literally everywhere you look. So it's a green tea and matcha lover's paradise. And to be honest, I feel like I may have eaten too matcha today. <laughs> anyway, if you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys again very soon in another video. Bye, guys!